Welcome back to part two of the textured crop tutorial. In this video, we'll be focusing on the fade, the blend and the refinement. If you'd like to see part one to this series, then click the banner in the top right where you'll find out how to scissor cut the top. Let's jump straight into the drop fade. To start, we'll attach our grade three and just under our foundation guide, we'll place the highest point of our fade. Next up, we'll take our 1.5 guard and with an open lever, we're going just under our grade three. We've skipped the grade two on this fade as using your 1.5 guard with an open fade lever and an exaggerated scoop, you can fade straight into your grade three. Close your fade lever and work just under your previous grade around half a finger's width. We'll now start the lowest point of our fade, which will be the zero. Set your zero guide at one finger's width at the temple. Follow this up by setting your guide at the back of the head using three fingers width from the nape. Connect both of your guides and clean off the bulk. If your client has a beard, it's a good idea to think about where you're gonna set your zero guide at the sideburn. As a rule of thumb, I almost always place my zero guide at the top crease of the ear. That way I've got room to adjust my fade if needs be. Now take your trimmers and clean the area just underneath your zero guide, making sure not to overlap. Using talc is a great way to avoid irritation from the foils. The talc acts as a barrier between the skin and foil, helping to glide the blade across the skin. Talc is one of the best tools for fading as it removes all of the debris from the skin, giving you a clean canvas to work with. Grab your foils and flick them into your trimmer guide. Follow up by going up and down on the grain of the hair to get the rest of the skin bald. We're now starting our fade. Take your clipper with an open lever and place your guide at one finger's width above your zero line. As we're keeping our shape up darker, we're going to stop at one comb's width before the temple. This will allow us more hair to play with when shaping up. Now close the fade lever all the way closed and use your zero to flick gently right on the previous zero line. This will help to break up your zero guide from earlier. Close the lever by two clicks or halfway closed and remove the remaining shadows in between your zero and half guide. If there are still lines, further close your lever by one click or almost closed and pick out the rest of the blemishes with the corners of your blade. Attach your half guard and with an open lever and light hand, exaggerate a scooping motion into the top of your fade. As you approach the temple area, angle your blade towards the shape up and lightly fade it in. Bearing in mind that we still want this hair longer so that we can shape it up later on. Close your fade lever and remove the half line from earlier. If you find you're still left with a little bit of work to do, remove your guard, open your lever and work at the remaining blemishes until smooth. At the temple peak area, we're going to use two guides. First place our horizontal guide and then our vertical guide. We'll connect these two by using a pivot method with our trimmer. This is achieved by placing your index finger of your comb hand and your middle finger of your trimmer hand in a T shape. Using your index finger, pull the skin taut. This will help create a natural curve. Use the corner of your blade and the pivot technique to create your C cup. Watch again for the left side to refine your knowledge. So that's the drop fade complete, we're now moving on to our blend. For this haircut, we're using a lower, heavier transition for a more bowly, edgy look. To achieve a heavier transition, you create weight on the blend by pulling your block graduation down to 45 degrees as we did earlier in this scissor cut tutorial. If you missed this video, click the top right of the screen now, which will take you to part one of this tutorial. Alternatively, you can find part one in the description below. Take your wild flat top comb or your favorite clipper comb and scoop just under the transition. Pull the comb out towards you until the hair is at the bottom of the comb. Reduce the bulk on the blend and work your way around the head each time working in two sections up the head. Section one is the bulk removal and section two, which will be just above number one, is to smoothen and graduate your blend. So that's the blend finished. We're now moving on to our refining stage. Take your thinners or texture shears and lightly break up the bulk on the blend. Again, we're working in two or three sections. Section one is bulk removal and section two and three are to soften and graduate the edge. For a smoother fade, you can refine the detail by using thinners over comb to reduce the dark spots in your fade. Alternatively, you can use a vertical chipping method, much the same as when you're using your cutting scissor. So that's our cutting finished. All that's left to do now is style the hair and get your client Instagram ready. For James's hair, we're using a combination of Uppercut Deluxe Salt Spray and Texturizing Powder. We're going to shake an even layer of powder across the top of the head and start to scrunch it in with our hands. Scrunch and place the hair into the position you want before fixing it in with your favorite hairspray. 
Don't forget to watch part one of this tutorial. If you managed to get this far, thanks so much for your time. I'm CMC Barber and you've just completed the texture crop and drop fade tutorial. Thank you.